Hi there, this is Math 2, Unit 10, looking at worksheet number one. There are two different worksheets in this unit, and so it depends on which one your class went with. This is the first option, I guess. And so first we're gonna be taking a look at some equations that come from section B of your notes. And so when you used your notes the other day, you were first doing a Desmos activity, and then in section B, it had an activity where it did not want you to use your notes, and instead it provided you with a table and a quadratic here, function here, that you then plotted out some points and then went to plot them out on the graph using a variety of, of colors there to show what that would look like. So for example, you had x squared plus three and you put in some points here. This one for me, I made kind of a pinkish color and you looked at what the domain and the range values were and you graphed that out. And so in this first example here, for example, the domain, which again, it's the all the X values and the range of the Y values. Just remember it's alphabetical, right? X comes before Y and D comes before R. Um, what values of X are gonna be true for this equation? This is gonna be true for all values of X. It just goes on forever and ever. So we would say all values of X are gonna be true. That's how you write that there with that kind of R thing with a little line in the middle. All right, and so when you plot that out, it looks like this. And for the Y value, the range is gonna be all values that are be greater than or equal to three. When you look at the next uh, quadratic, three X squared, okay, there's no B X value here and there's no C value. We just have the quadratic part here, that A value. <laughs> when you plot that in there, we're at a zero, zero for our, what we call a minimum, minimum point. We plot them up there in green, it's a little bit narrower than what the first one was there. And we can see it's also gonna be true for all values of X and it's gonna be greater than or equal to uh, zero for the range. When you did the last one, you have values like negative nine, negative three, negative one. And we see that because it has this negative sign in front of the quadratic, that tells us the direction of this quadratic. It's gonna be going down, right? Or, going, or opening downward, would you say? Okay, it also has this value here of a negative one, which is gonna tell you where we're gonna have our maximum or minimum. In this case here, it becomes a maximum because it's going the opposite way. Again, true, all values of X are gonna work for our domain and the range though is gonna be, Y is gonna be any value less than or equal to one right there. So using that information, what I wanted you to do was then take a look at this chart and fill in these values here. So looking at the chart, looking at uh, the Y equals X squared plus three, which for me was my, my pink graph, is there a minimum or a maximum? And so again, looking at my pink graph, I don't have a maximum, I have a minimum, a low point there. So we're gonna call that a minimum. The vertex, that's gonna be that point where the maximum or minimum is gonna be located at. And in this case here, the point is right here at zero comma three. Okay, so really that point often is gonna be where that is that, well, I shouldn't say often, because it could change and have uh, a little shift, that'll be later. But for now, our vertex is gonna be at zero comma three, all right? The domain we said was all real values of X and the range was everything was gonna be Y, it was gonna be greater than or equal to three was our range for that one there. And the second one, the green one, we have again a minimum value, right? That's the low point, we don't have a high point, we have a low point there. So we're gonna call that a minimum there on that one. So that's a minimum. Where that took place was at zero comma zero and the domain is gonna be all values of X and it's Y, it's range is gonna be all values greater than or equal to zero. For the kind of peach one though, negative two X squared minus one, we have a maximum value, right? The highest point it can reach is right there at zero comma negative one. So we're gonna write down that it has a maximum and that vertex point is at zero comma negative one. This is gonna be true for all values of X and for Y though, the range is gonna be Y will be less than or equal to, and what's our vertex point? Negative one. All right, so it's key to make sure you get this part here, right? This is one of the, the tougher ones if you're not just cautious of what you're doing. So now when you look at worksheet number one, uh, it's questions four to seven, it wants us to fill in the table, but not graphing, using what we learned about the equations from Desmos and before to be able to solve these things here, okay? so. Looking here, we, we have some patterns, right? If I have a positive value in front of my quadratic, I tend to have a minimum. When I have a negative value in front of my quadratic, I end up with a maximum. 
So when we take a look at these um, uh, quadratic equations here, we can see I have a positive, which tells me I'm gonna have a minimum value. When I see a positive, I know it's gonna curve this way. I have a positive here, so I'm gonna curve this way, so I'll have a minimum value. With that negative, I'm gonna curve down, so I'm gonna end up with a maximum. And this net one is negative as well, so I'll also end up with a maximum, okay? For that vertex, for the vertex point, what we have is it's that point where it's gonna curve. Uh, or it's going to have that higher low point. What we noticed over here was when we looked at that, what we call our C value, and why do we call it C value? Remember, it's AX squared plus BX plus C. That's our basic, our standard form for a quadratic equation. So that C value is that, that number that comes at the end. So when we look at our C value here, the C value tends to become the Y value of the vertex. Notice there's nothing here that's a zero plus zero goes there and minus one goes there. So when we come back over here, our vertex is gonna be this C value. So we would say the minimum would probably happen at, probably would happen at zero comma negative one. Here, our C value is three. So our minimum would be at zero comma uh, positive three. Here, there is no C value, right? It's a plus zero. So our maximum in this case would be at zero comma zero. And then here, again, there's no C value, so our maximum would be at zero comma zero. In all four of these cases here, because we're dealing with just um, some basic numbers, nothing crazy, the X values are gonna be all real uh, numbers, right? So that's gonna be our, our, ra our domain. All values of X are gonna work here. For the range, you're taking a look at where is this graph starting at, okay? So in this one here, for example, wherever that's gonna be, there's a Y value that is gonna be, we're gonna be above or below that, all right? When it's positive, we're generally saying it's gonna be greater than or equal to. So again, positive, so greater than or equal to. Negative, Y is gonna be less than or equal to. Negative, Y is gonna be less than or equal to. And then at that point, we're gonna take a look at our vertex value. So for this fourth, number four, Y will be greater than or equal to negative one. Y will be greater than or equal to three. Y is less than or equal to zero less than or equal to zero, all right? So that's what that looks like when we do that part right there. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit because we have to take a look at the next activity. Again, based upon what you do at Desmos, this is how you answer these questions, all right? So what we tend to see when we look at our graph, let's go back to the B section real quick. When we look at our B section, when I have a, a number here, there's just a one in front of this one for the, for the green. Right, that's what a quadratic looks like if it's just the value of one in front. When I make this a three, sorry, yeah, with the pink, when I make this a three for the, for the green value, notice that when I increase this number in front of the A, when I increase the A, and make it a three, make it a six, make it a hundred, whatever, the more I increase this number, the narrower or the skinnier my uh, quadratic graph is gonna become, okay? so. If I make this a larger number, the graph tends to be uh, get, get squished together, make it more more skinny, okay, or skinnier. Uh, if I have a fractional value, which we didn't do, if I had a one fourth x squared, that would actually make it wider. And so that's what's not shown on this one, but we did that with some of your decimals activities there. Hopefully you saw that there. So when I take a look at this, to find the skinniest, that means it's gonna have the, the largest, I'm looking for the largest a value, okay? That will be the skinniest because the larger the number, the skinnier it's gonna be. So in this case here, when I look at all these options, I have a one, three, negative two, a half, a four, negative three, and uh, negative one fourth. My largest a value is gonna be number five, right? And that's because a equals four. So that'll be my skinniest graph. Which graphs will have a maximum? Well, we look back, we had three, six, and seven are gonna have maximums. Minimums are gonna be at one, two, four, and five. So one, two, four, and five. Shift it up. So shift it up means that that vertex, right, is gonna be above the x-axis. So shift it up there. So which ones have a vertex that is above zero? Because zero is the, where we're starting from. So which one have a vertex above zero? That would be numbers one and number five. For shifted down, 
shift it down, it doesn't matter which way it, it turns, so I should, I should clarify this one here, right? This vertex could be shifted up and still go this way, okay? That's okay as well. It just means that it's gonna be above the X, right, the X line there. So shifted down would mean that it's happening over here. I could be going this way like that, or I could actually be going this way like that. Those would both be appropriate. But the main thing is below the X axis. So which ones are below the X axis? That would be number four is below the X axis. Oh, and number three. They're at negative one and negative one. All right. So that's the idea right there. Now, based upon that, what I want you to do is I want you to sketch the graph of the quadratic based upon your work in numbers four through seven. So I'm gonna do a couple of these real quick, just so we're on the same page. All right, so on this one here, I can see that I'm going to be with a positive. I'm gonna be curving up. I know that I have a vertex here at zero comma negative one, all right? And because it is a fraction, it's going to be a little bit wider. All right. So I'm going to put my vertex first at zero comma negative one. Plot that there. And that's what I do there. And in terms of that curve, um, you know, if I wanted to actually think about a point or plot a point, I could plug a value in there. It's going to get harder as, in, as the quadratics grow and become a little more complicated. If I put one in there, I'd end up with uh, one squared, which is one times a half, which is a half. So a half minus one. All right, so a half minus one is gonna be a negative half. So at one, I'm somewhere about here and here. If I did the two, then I have four squared, right? So I end up with two squared times a half, which is a half times four, which is four over two, which is two minus one equals one. And so at value two, I'm gonna be at a one, All right? So we can plot that there and plot that there. So in essence, I have a graph that looks something like this, if I was to graph that out, all right? And what your teacher's really looking for here is, do you have your curve going the right way? Do you have your vertex going the right way? And are you noticing if it's wide or narrow, all right? Again, it probably shouldn't look like a V, it should be curved, but it's just the tightness of that graph there. That's the idea. When I look at number 14, again, I have a positive value there, so I know I'm gonna be curving up, right? With my parabola's gonna be curving up. I also know that I have, my vertex is a positive, I'm gonna be at zero comma three. So I could plot this and go one, two, three, and put the point right there at zero comma three. Because it is a whole number there and it's a little bit larger, I'm gonna end up with a skinnier type of number. So think about if I put a one value in there, one squared is one, one times four is four, four plus three is seven. So my one value is gonna be here at seven, right about there. So I end up with a skinny graph looking like that, right? And again, that's that difference between having a fractional value and a whole number. It's, it's the, the width of that parabola over there. That's what that would look like. For 15, again, I don't have a C value. So I, a couple things, so I just start here. I know it's negative, so I'm gonna be curving down. My vertex is at zero comma, what's this one? Zero, right? So I'm gonna be here and curving down. This is a, again a whole number, so it's gonna be a little bit tighter, a little skinnier. If I think about a one value, one squared is one times negative three is negative three. So I'll be here for the one value. And so this curve is gonna be more like this, right? Something along those lines. Here we have again another fractional value, which means it's gonna be a wider, it's positive. So I'm gonna have a wide parabola. I don't have a C value, so this is all gonna happen at zero comma zero, all right? And one is gonna be at one fourth, which is gonna be here, all right? So it's gonna be a little bit wider, going like something along those lines. That's the idea for what we're doing here. Okay, and that was really today's lesson. Again, helping you with the Desmos part and moving on. Here, just a quick little review of some factoring work from the last unit. All right, so we have an x squared, we have a negative 64. So we're gonna take this and break it up like so. I'm gonna probably put an x and an x to break that up. And I'm gonna think about what I can use to get to the 64. Some options I could consider. I know I have eight times eight, but I have to think about this middle, this b value. Eight plus eight won't give me a 30. Eight minus eight doesn't really work there. So the eights aren't gonna work out too nicely. So knowing that, Think about some other numbers, maybe something like a 64. Let's cut it in half, 32 times two. 
right? 32 times two is gonna give me 64, and I notice that 32 minus two would get me to 30. So I'm gonna put a 32 there, I'm gonna put a two there, knowing that I need to get a positive 30. This part should be positive for positive 32. This would be negative for a negative two, and let's double check to see if that works. I know the x squared, the x becomes x squared. I know this becomes negative 2x. Here we get a positive 32x, and here we still end up with a negative 64. Combining our like terms, we end up with x squared plus 30x minus 64. So we're good there. Let's take a look at the next odd one over here. Here we have x squared minus uh, 121. Hopefully you recognize that with it being a negative 121, that is 11 squared, or 11 times 11 gets you 121. So this one becomes two square numbers. We have x plus 11 times x minus 11. And what's that gonna do? That's gonna cancel out the negative 11x and a positive 11x are gonna go away. So I'm just left with the x squared minus 121. And finally, number 21 for the day, we have 2x plus 11x plus 12. There's nothing I can factor out of that first, so I'm gonna break it apart like so. I know this has to be a 2x, and this one has to be an x. And now I have to play with a 12. 12 could be, what, a 12 times one. I can end up with a four times three. But those combinations are gonna have to work with that two in order to create that 11. So I could do some guess and check, right? I could do a three and a four. And looking at this, that becomes two times four is eight, and then a three, and then thinking about eight and three, eight plus three is 11, that looks good, and it can all be positive, so we'll put a positive and a positive, and we're set to go there. That's it for today's lesson. Hope that helps you out, and we'll see you next time.